In this video, we're going to take a look at the various security solutions we can use in our GCSE computer science. So first and foremost, we're going to take a look at phishing and farming. So to avoid phishing and farming, there's some things we can do automatically with the computer and some things that just come through with training. So using a trusted, legitimate internet service provider, make sure your computer is updated with the latest security updates, checking the spelling of a website, like I said in my previous video, I almost fell victim to a WhatsApp having three P's instead of two. Check the URL, make sure it's nice and correct. Check the certificate, sometimes it pops up on like Google and things and in the Explorer, saying that the certificate's not trusted. Sometimes it can be something daft, like, um, your date and time and your computer is different to the web server and it gets confused and sometimes it can be because it's dodgy. Make sure you've got well-enforced policies, good antivirus software, look for that padlock and check for HTTPS. Once you've got all those and you can take them off and they all look great, then you know it's probably not a phishing or farming scam. So next thing to look at is our antivirus software. So antivirus software itself is really complicated, but in simple terms, it has a list of definitions, virus definitions. It's like, essentially it's like a list of signatures it's called, which is like a list of programs that we know are viruses. And then when a program's installed or downloaded and it matches that signature or matches the list, then it's recognized to be malware and it is deleted or removed or whatever. Usually you get alerted, and then sometimes things get automatically taken away and blocked and deleted, and sometimes it'll say, do you want to remove uh, whatever it is? So you get a bunch of um, options and recommendations. Now, antivirus can find malware in three different ways. You've got on-access scans, heuristic scans, and full system scans. So an on-access scan, this is where the program or file is compared to that list. If it's found, it'll block it, and you can remove or Quarantine. So you might download something and it'll pop up straight away on your screen. You've downloaded Trojan.exe, do you want to allow it or remove it? And then it'll do whatever it needs to do as the software is to get rid of it. So that's on access. So as soon as you get that file, it pops up straight away. You then got heuristic scans. This is where it, it sort of runs in the background and sees what various programs are doing. So if a program behaves like malware, like they're using loads of disk space because it's um, constantly um, replicating itself, It'll be alerted and say, right, this is acting a bit dodgy, remove it. And then this is sort of how the software captures new malware that doesn't have a definition yet. So something that's quite new. Um, some software you download, like if you do any cryptocurrency mining, a lot of antiviruses pick these up because they will use a lot of CPU usage. Um, if it, especially if it's one that uses a lot of uh, your disk space as well, it may get mistaken for a virus and get removed and because a lot of um, these different clients of mine coins can have viruses even ones that work absolutely fine and get picked up as well and you've got a full system scan so this is usually you either do it yourself you say right full system scan now or you go ahead and have it so every week you just one and it'll scan every file on the computer and give you a little report and tell you whether or not there's been a virus or not So another thing we can do is sandboxing. So this is where we have like a virtual, it's almost like a bit virtual machine. So on computer, we sort of make virtual machines for every program. So then the software is actually interacting with the fake or the virtual representation and can't actually change the actual computer itself. So this is essentially a type of virtualization. So Mac OS, um, every app or every piece of software that's used in macOS has sandboxing in, so that's why people say that Macs can't get viruses. They definitely can get viruses, but the viruses can't do as many things and that, and as well because, because of that reason, not as many viruses are about, so most of the virus issues are with um, PC sort of users. So you've got your physical security, so things like locking rooms, using biometric swipe cards or keypads to enter rooms, anti-theft pens to mark your equipment, uh, having a CCTV and actually having someone constantly checking that, reinforced doors, and having policies to reduce the effectiveness of social engineering. So social engineering is when essentially hacking without 
using a computer. So you can ring up and ask questions and pretend to be somebody else and essentially trick the people at the company to thinking you're them. There's a video on the internet, on YouTube, if you search for uh, social engineering, and it's this lady who um, rings up and pretends to be someone's husband, uh, someone's wife, sorry, uh, and gets the passwords changed and sets her hem of our phone so she, she can start um, changing things. Uh, there's a few things wrong with that video, like a few things don't quite make sense, but the idea is there where they trick somebody into you, so you sort of the person at the call centre or whatever keeps away that information by accident. So having a good policy, making sure people are trained well, stops that happening. And then you've got proxy servers. So this is where we have, again, it's a little bit sort of um, like a sandboxing, whereas instead of having direct access to the server, we've got like a middleman server that sits between the internet and the actual server. So any attacks that hit, um, that hit your network, hit the proxy server and not the real one. So this is good, so if the proxy server gets damaged or something happens to it and you lose, and you lose all that data, the real damaged data is absolutely fine. Um, it also handles a lot of requests and you can sort of do lots of jobs that the server would normally do. So it means the server can go ahead and do more things, it saves resources, and the proxy server can also hold copies of frequent new sites, which means essentially it's got lots of things cached that the uh, users can get that from the proxy server rather than the actual server. So again, it speeds up the access. And then we've got firewalls. So there's two types, you've got a hardware firewall and a software firewall. So a hardware firewall is there to protect the whole network, whereas a software firewall protects a single computer. So usually your hardware firewall is in your router and your software one is something you actually go ahead and install yourself. So a firewall checks the data passing through and makes sure that it genuinely looks at like port numbers and things like that and checks that it's legit. It also monitors things coming in and things going out and you set various rules. So some programs can have full access to the network and some can be completely blocked, including blocking certain websites. So you might not be able to go on certain websites that are full of viruses. Uh, you might not be able to go on things like Facebook that will stick on there so people are working not going on Facebook all day. And it may be that you know, certain programs you don't want to go onto the internet, so you just want the offline uh, sort of capabilities, so it just works sort of standalone on your computer. So again, just like on the previous videos, a quick exam question. So explain how antivirus software may help to prevent malware on a computer system and explain why computer security is more effective when antiviruses and firewalls are used. So in total, it'll be six marks there, so it should take about six or seven minutes. Pause the video, give it an answer, and then we'll go for the answers in a moment. Okay, now for some answers. So antivirus software scans and detects viruses, one mark, on the computer and removes them. Most malware is accidentally downloaded from email attachments. Antivirus software detects and removes malware, keeping the computer safe. Firewalls monitor incoming and outgoing communications, and a firewall can detect and block unauthorized communication. And that's it, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the video, and I will see you in the next one.